So we all live on this nice little planet, and uh, we're very productive here. Our estimated world uh, G GWP, gross world product, is roughly $61 trillion. That's a lot of cash. <laughs> but where's most of this come from? Most of this actually, this productivity, it comes from factories. And so, and we have a huge increase in from, uh, those are old slides. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we've had a huge increase um, in uh, productivity. And so where's all this productivity come from? It's come from factories. And in factories, well, let me tell you a little story about factories. I, uh, a few years ago, wait, no, it was more like 10 years ago, I'm getting a little old, and uh, there I went with a group of friends who are most of are even here tonight, and uh, we visited uh, all of the wonderful temples and big cities and uh, even the, uh, the hot springs, oh, over there, I remember that, and, uh, which I, the hot springs, definitely uh, I recommend visiting. <laughs> but the most amazing thing we saw there was a Toyota, car manufacturing plant, well at least I thought so. And there, it was really amazing. They saw all these workers doing stuff, all these robots doing stuff, and I said, wow, this is really cool. And I, was, I, I, saw, I asked the, the, the tour guide, and I was like, how many people work here? And he said, oh, about 400 people. And I was like, wow. And how many cars do you make? And he said, 500 cars in a, in a shift. And I was like, wow. I thought it was absolutely impressive that, that that 400 people can make that many cars in one day. If I thought to myself, if I, if I had all the tools and all the stuff, it'd probably take me years to make that happen, to actually do it myself. But they were, and so I asked myself, well, how are they so productive? Are they stronger than me? Or are they faster or something like that? But actually it turns out they're just like you and I. But, and so, I, so if that's true, then there must be some, something more special. And it turns out they work in a factory where it's all optimized to make whatever device they have. And it actually uses people and mechanisms and assembly lines and but most importantly they use automation and robotics to to create this productivity. Um, and so so then <coughs> following my logical argument that what if you're able to take that automation out of the factory and into our everyday lives? Wouldn't that be cool? Because I look at my automation in my everyday life and I look at my wash and my dryer and I'm like the washer can't even put the clothes in the dryer by itself. <laughs> and, and the factories are like doing wind shields and doing all these crazy things. So, so, and what if we were able to do that? What if we were able to give that type of productivity from the factory into our, our, our normal everyday lives? I believe that would increase our economy by orders of magnitude. Not just like a little gain here and there, like 1%. I'm talking in the hundreds of percent change. So that number I had before, that 61 trillion, multiply by that by, they say, 200. That could be our total GWP uh, 100 years from now. And so that's the game I want to play. I want to play big games. So, um, so, and, and, and so why are robots good? Robots are good because I think they'll, they'll do great things for our economy. And besides, who wouldn't want to have a robot? I think it's one of those in the things that you want to have. And I, um, in January, I asked my mom, well, my dad was like saying, well, why are you building robots? You know, robots are, are uh, you know, how are you going to sell them to and stuff like that? And I was like, I don't know. I'm, I'm still looking at it. And I asked my mom, hey, mom, do you want to buy a robot? And she said, yes, I want to buy a robot. <laughs> I was like, wait, I got a first customer. But, uh, <laughs> And so, so then my second question was, why, why don't we have them in our everyday lives? Why aren't they around? If they're such a good idea, and they're gonna be so productive, why aren't they here? Good question. I mean, there are little, little um, Roombas running around, and a couple other robots, but why don't we have the, the robot that they promised us in, in uh, the world's fairs and stuff like that? And my answer to that question is, robots are hard. They're hard to do. One of the reasons why they're hard is they're complex, combination of mechanical systems, electrical systems, and um, software. Lots and lots and lots of software. And in order to do that, in order to build this complicated thing, you have to have really awesome mechanical engineers, really awesome electrical engineers, and really fabulous software guys. So, and so all those guys, I found out, because I, 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 so I came from the software world, so I'm in this camp over here, 
and I started talking to some of the network engineers, and they talked a completely different language. I, I, it was really hard to even talk to them because they are always saying, "Oh, this is a that's a software problem," and I'm going, "I'm saying, no, your 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 system is not working correctly," and they're all they, they're all blaming each other. And it's really hard to actually get them all to work together. Um, but I think we found a way to make that happen. We give them food. Um, so, <laughs> So, so now, so robots are hard, but there's, a, there's, there's an even more problem. So if there's just one problem, that's, 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 not a, that's not a deal breaker. But there's also very little investment going into robotics today. Very, very little, especially personal robotics. Japan puts most of the money into personal robotics uh, because they see it as a their national, um, uh, what do you call it, a national um, uh, a duty to do this. So uh, to handle all, a lot of their elderly people. And, and if there's no investment in it, then people won't work on it. So, um, so if there's any VCs in the, in the room, let's get some money into the rise. <laughs> and, and the reason why, one of the re biggest reasons why there's very little investment in uh, robotics is because there's no market for robotics today. Because robots can't really do anything that useful that are willing, you're willing to actually spend a lot of money for. It. So, so if there's no market, then there's no investment, there's no investment, there's nobody, no one's working on it, so thus we have no robots. And that is a sad day. Well, for you guys, me. Um, <laughs> so, so this is a classic chicken and, egg, chicken and egg problem. That without robots, we can't develop useful apps. And without useful apps for the robots to run, there's no robots. So, so the question is, well, that's why we don't have them. And <laughs> so my last question, my last thing is, how are we going to make this happen? How are we going to make this happen? Well, first, we cannot do this alone. Actually, we don't want to do this alone. This is more fun to do it with other people. And so what we are doing, our strategy, is actually create a community of people, of researchers, developers, and industry, and get them to work together to, to uh, make this a, a market and, a, and, a, and a, a real thing. And, the way, and what we're bringing to the table is that we're bringing a platform a sturdy, robust platform for these guys to stand upon and to um, to uh, to build upon, and so that software guys can work on the software things, the hardware guys can work on the little hardware things, and the researchers can like stand up really high and do all the really hard stuff. And this is this is our strategy is to build this platform, and then you're going to see it in a little bit. Um, it, it includes a bunch of things. Uh, and the most important thing I want to say is, is that we, as Will Raj, we don't intend to own this. We don't even, we don't intend to control it. And we don't intend to be the gatekeepers or the app approvers of this. Of this <laughs> and most importantly, we don't intend to slow it down. We want to accelerate this. We want to put the pedal to the metal and make this happen. Because I'm not getting any younger. I want to make this happen in my lifetime. <laughs> so this is why I started Willow Garage. And this is the vision of the company. To make robots happen and make this an industry. So, so I answered my, my little questions that I, I set up for myself. And, and I just want to tell you a little bit about how we started. Steve and I got together and we, we started working and doing all these different things. We did, did a little projects. And then one day, Steve said, hey, Mike, over to Stanford. I want to show you something. And we go over to Stanford. And I was like, wow, I haven't been to Stanford in a while. And I, and um, these, these two uh, little kids, or these two grad students, <laughs> showed me their, their little ro wooden robot they, they built. <laughs> it was absolutely, I was enthralled. It was, it was able to, um, it was able to clean up uh, a room, pick up all the different things. And I was like, great, there's kids, perfect. Um, it was able to uh, slice a cucumber, hold a, uh, a knife and, and slice a cucumber. It was able to feed uh, somebody, an elderly person, oh yeah, that was Keenan, uh, some food uh, by itself. And I was like, this is great. So, and what was most impressive is that they actually shared, they had this vision of doing this, uh, building some robots, and they basically told me it takes about nine months to build these robots.